Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Shweta Mukherjee from STEM. First of all, I'm really thankful to all of you for taking this time to join us today. So, so now I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Shri Padaraja K. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. So, Dr. Shri Padaraja K. He did his master's in electronics from Bangalore University and his PhD from the NIT Karnataka Suratkal in area of droplet microfluids. So he started his career in 2007 in MEMS as a project assistant from IASC Bangalore. So later he joined the Big Tech Solutions Private Limited as a senior application engineer and subsequently as a product manager in Shridhar Technologies Private Limited. And starting from 2021, he is working as a manager applications and sales in the IntelliSense Software India. And he already conducted many trainings programs and already given a number of invited talks across India. He is having a vast experience in the same area of MEMS for more than 12 years. So now, before I hand over the session to doctor, so I would like to request you all, you all can feel free to drop your questions on the topic in the chat or during the talk. And once the talk will be end, we will take your questions and we will provide the answers. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, now I would like you to uh, share your screen and I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think you can give me the access to share it. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so can you see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Great, okay. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, for uh, providing me the opportunity to share some thoughts here. Uh, thanks to ISTEM and also thanks to all the participants. Um, and today being the Raksha Bandhan and uh, most of you are, uh, or also most of them will be busy. Okay, so thanks for uh, registering and uh, attending this talk. Okay, and uh, today we will see about uh, how these MEMS devices uh, have been uh, uh, the challenges that we face in MEMS design, and uh, we will see how simulation is being done, and through the software IntelliSuite. Okay, so it's a complete MEMS solution software. Okay, in the interest of everyone, so I would like to talk some basics of what uh, um, MEMS is, and then further we'll get on to the uh, actual uh, presentation stuff. Okay, so today's outline, we will see some introduction, and we will see the challenges in MEMS design and development. And then we will see the structural uh, design and then the research opportunities using MEMS simulations. Okay. So, as such, uh, here we have the uh, MEMS is basically an integration of uh, mechanical elements, sensors, actuators, and electronics on a common substrate. Okay. It is developed using CMOS and bi CMOS process, and with micro machining uh, technique, we'll be able to make it to movement, um, movable uh, mechanically, uh, it, it's possible to move, okay? And it's an emerging technology which combines multiple physics disciplines and typical scale is uh, between one micrometer to one millimeter, okay? So here it will be of, uh, it is small in size and low power consumption, lightweight, low cost, portability, once it is, uh, once the process is set, it can be reproduced and uh, excellent control of purity. So naturally the sense facility is there. So we can see uh, the clean room facility there and it can be integrated with outside electronics. So the number of devices have captured the market already. So some of them are A, A accelerometer, B is gyroscope and C is MEMS microphone. Okay, so here we have the accelerometer uh, which is being used as an inertial device and gyroscope. So both of these devices have been 
a part of our smartphones and uh, uh, for quite some time now. Okay, and MEMS microphone has already been implemented in uh, the iPhone, um, which have been released in the last uh, 2018, 19 times, right? So these are some of the successful MEMS devices which have already captured the market. So various other applications are also being explored. So whereas uh, the in, in the case of inertial sensors and pressure sensors, it can uh, various uh, uh, inertial sensors of different range and with pressure uh, and pressure sensors of different range can be useful in aerospace, biomedical, automotive, and flow sensors can be used in uh, biomedical and aerospace, chemical and gas sensors in industrial safety, food technology, healthcare, and pharmaceutical, and RF MEMS on aerospace and communication systems. So all of these devices have different ranges of operation based on the specifications and requirement. It takes its own uh, working range. Okay, optimizing them is a big challenge. So when it comes to design parameters, so we have uh, mechanical, thermal, and electrical. So these are the three major parameters that we need to consider. When it comes to mechanical, it's compliance mechanics needs to take care, and thermal and electrical. Um, thermal in terms of thermal conductivity and electrical is electrostatic. And sometimes if it is piezoelectric stuff, uh, then uh, we need to take care based on the materials that we choose. So whenever we try to design some device, uh, we always collect the design requirements. And then based on that, we do the design, basic design, and then we do the optimization. How do we do it? We start with the 3D CAD model. We perform simulations, and then we create layouts on that using that. And then based on that, we decide the process optimization, fabrication, and testing. Okay, so we start with the 3D CAD model. Okay, what's the CAD? Computer aided design. So how does it look like? How how should we how should uh, how the device should look like? And what should be the device parameters? What should be the material? What should be the dimensions? All these things a design can do, and in combination with the simulation, thermal, electrical, mechanical simulation. We also do reduced ordered model simulation to integrate this with outside electronics. And then we create layout. Once the device is optimized to uh, simulation level or software level, then we create layouts. Okay. And then we define the process flow. So process optimization will start. And then the fabrication is done. And finally, the testing happens. So this is the uh, walk through that uh, MEMS design start and uh, reaches the target, okay? And here, the major three challenges that we will see is one is the device optimization in using CAD model, okay? So device design can be done, but uh, it has to work with uh, low power. It has to give maximum gain. It has to uh, have uh, less fatigue. So many, many parameters are involved. So let's categorize this into three. A is the FEM simulation, which uh, I think quite, quite a lot of people have been using FEM simulations or multiphysics simulations for quite some time. It's not just that we have something called as MEMS plus ROIC. Once the device is created, it has to talk to other outside electronic circuits. Your MEMS device is wonderful. If it does not communicate the right signals with the right amplitude and right frequency to a, to a readout integrated circuit, then the device is of no use, right? So, so as, as as it's a complete system. It's just like we have sense organs and we have brain. If either one doesn't work, then the whole system is gone. So it's important that we need to have system level simulation also. It's not just the multiphysics simulation. And once those two things are taken care, and if we are proceeding to fabrication, then the process optimization is important. So in process optimization, we see the layout, we define the process recipe, and we do the process simulation and calibration. So here, based on the 
simulations results we uh, the software tries to help you to optimize the process in your clean room okay so let's go one by one if it's in terms of cad model that is using the fem we directly draw the 3d cad model we perform the fem simulation and we do the parametric analysis and then we try to change the design and then redo the simulation and this cycle keep, keeps happening. How do we offer a solution using IntelliSuite software? Is if we can parameterize the structural, we can parameterize input variables. Tell the software that I want to know the working condition of the device for these many dimensions. Tell the software to do that, set it, leave it. So software creates multiple dimensions and then produces a graph of uh, various thicknesses, various width, and various length. And if you can parameterize the input variables. And further, you can extract rigid body variables through the system model extraction. And then you can do the reduced ordered model simulation to integrate with outside electronic circuits. Okay. So this is a solution that we offer uh, in the software uh, IntelliSuite uh, for challenges uh, for the design which have been done using the CAD model approach. But there is another way of approach is the bottom, sorry, the top down approach that is the element based modeling. So using the elements like the cone structures and beam structure and plate elements, just like the piece by netlist, we can even model the MEMS design and we do the parametric simulation even there and then we can parameterize the input variables. So we have a lump model which is the element based modeling, the drag and drop of these elements and then we can optimize the uh, or try to do the modifications in the design to optimize the device. And uh, we have another challenge that is on the process simulation where we have a layout created, a process recipe is defined, process recipe meaning the method to fabricate the device and then process integration. So when we do the process integration, then we may have to do some modifications with layouts. So, and we do the modification, we define the process recipe, we do the process integration, and this cycle keeps happening until the right dimensions are achieved okay how do we do that we can do that using the design rule check say for instance you want to fabricate the device in uh, uh, indian institute of science with a sense facility sense facility has their own design rules so based on the design rules you need to give it give them the design not every design can be fabricated so if you are planning to fabricate the device Please check the design rule document of the uh, of, of the facility, the foundry, and then you create a template in IntelliSuite software and run your mask layouts in that DRC check. In case if there are errors, it points the error and then you can make the modifications accordingly. Say for instance, you want to fabricate it at Bombay, you want to fabricate it at uh, uh, CD Pilani or SEL Chandigarh, so wherever you want to do it. So they have their own set of design rules. So please take their design rules and then run your document in their design rule check file, which is created in the software. And then that can point at errors and you can work in the boundaries of the design rules of that foundry. Okay, so we can do the process verification by that. So when it comes to multiphysics, uh, which has been the most, uh, most interesting part for many researchers, we can do a lot of uh, thermal, electrical, mechanical, linear, non-linear, piezoelectric, piezoresistive, uh, packaging analysis kind of a stuff. Okay? So one interesting thing that we also have is the packaging analysis. And here you also see, uh, you can see my mouse cursor, uh, where you can see a reduced ordered model simulation. So here, this is an example of a resonator. And if you wish to 
process those signals which are coming out of the resonator, you cannot connect any electrical circuits in your CAD model, in your APU model. Instead, you can take the reduced order models of that, and then you can create a differential amplifier or whatever the circuit that you wish to do. Okay. So this is some novel things that you can get in the software. And if you use this approach, uh, you have the modeling approach using the 2D and 3D CAD model. So you need not approach only via the fabrication process flow. Okay, usually some of the software do offer a fabrication process flow approach, which is quite tedious because fabrication comes only when the device is optimized. Not every time you can fabricate and then uh, fabrication simulation and take the device out. Okay, and uh, first we need to optimize the device. Okay, and then we do the preprocessor in case if the files are quite large or if you are planning to work in a uh, area where uh, it has array of devices like the micro mirrors and the microphones, uh, then you can use the preprocessor. It saves a lot of time because you can do the parametric simulations. Uh, parametric simulations are basically a dimensional parameter. So you can set of various dimensions and then you can do the pre post processing, which will ease with more graphical based output and then the macro model simulation to verify your FEM results with the Lagrangian based output. Okay, so this was the CAD model approach that we have. And we have the top down approach, what I'm calling it as uh, the uh, system level simulation or element based modeling. So where we have different elements like the beams and plates and combs, and we connect them um, more like a circuit, but it's actually a MEMS device, and then you can perform the simulation on the these devices. What you see is a bandpass filter, basically a resonator. It it resonates to a particular frequency value. It 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 resonates maximum to a particular frequency value. So all these outputs of these element based models can be shown. The results are shown in 3D models. And these element based models can be exported to FEM model. So if you are planning to compare the results of your FEM simulation with element based modeling, then you don't have to redo the design for FEM. So you can just push this design to create the FEM model. On the other side, if you are planning to do the process simulation, you can directly push it to a layout and then you can define the process recipe. And if you are planning to integrate this with electronic circuits, so you can see these, these can be integrated with electrical, digital, electronics and control systems, structural mechanics, thermal, along with these MEMS devices. And further, so the macro model simulation typically takes us to also to a level where it can interface with outside EDA tool. Okay, it's a schematic driven design. It, hierarchical modeling is there at different levels. You can define them and it saves a lot of time. So FEM simulation use, uh, FEM simulation um, engineers understand how long it takes to perform a simulation when, when it comes to FEM. But uh, here in this case, it is 100 to 1000 times faster than FEM models, okay? And then it can do a quick prototype and explore multiple designs in a short duration as you can do a parametric simulation and all your results are shown in 3D. Okay, so next we'll move on to microfabrication. In terms of microfabrication, so three major steps, so four major steps we see. One is the deposition, lithography, etching, and bonding. So various combinations of these four steps with different materials contributes to microfabrication. Okay, so let's see how, what all the research opportunities that you get in the MEMS simulation and using the software IntelliSure. So you can parameterize the structural, as I mentioned. So you can see, let's take an accelerometer design. So basically a center plate with four suspended beams here. 
So I want to understand how the natural frequency changes with respect to length of the beam. So I can redo the design multiple times and keep on doing the simulation one after the other, but that consumes a lot of time redoing the design. So instead, I would like to tell the software that boss, this is my set of designs. Please do it for me. And so what you see, the first graph is the change in the natural frequency for parameterizing the beam length. Okay. And, and in the second one, what you see is the change in the displacement for parametric loads. Okay, so you can parameterize both uh, damage and you can also parameterize the, the load, the input load. Okay, so when it comes to electrostatic based, so similar results can also be extracted. So here you see the, uh, the graph or uh, the first image is a comb structure which we typically use in inertial devices, gyroscopes, accelerometers, and resonators. So it's typically uh, with electrostatic. What you see on the right side is the change in capacitance versus overlapping electrodes, okay? So number of electrodes, so change in the overlapping area, how does the capacitance change? So we can redo the same simulation for piezoelectric beams. So if you're planning to work on energy harvester, or you are planning to work on surface acoustic wave devices, bulk acoustic wave, or any piezoelectric like materials like PVDF. So all these things can be parameterized with dimensions and also the input variables. Okay. So once these things are done, so we move on to system model extraction where we capture the strain energy associated with each modes of vibrations. Then we capture the electrostatic energy, the fluid damping characteristics, and a compact model representation of this uh, of the MEMS device. And then uh, it is available in a HDL form. Okay. So here we have the reduced order model. Simulation. So here is a representation of how the reduced rod model simulation works. So what we see is the template, a reduced rod model template, where we import uh, the FEM file onto this model, and then this black box works as a as our MEMS device, and then the other electronic circuits can be connected or other signal conditioning systems can be connected. So probably at the end of uh, my talk, I'll be able to show you all of these examples. Okay, so what is the outcome? Is that we have more reliable results uh, and benchmarking between the FEM and the Lagrangian model, and we can compare results between them. And a comprehensive study, structural behavior and behavioral study for range of loads. Okay, when we do such a uh, comprehensive study for various structural dimensions, then we have clarity on the device. Okay, so if we are targeting any application, then uh, you'll be able to uh, target any application. Uh, then uh, the understanding of the device becomes easy when, when the device becomes when the understanding of the device becomes easy, targeting any application becomes, uh, I mean, uh, it, will not, will it, it will not be quite challenging. And when it comes to element-based modeling, so we have the elements, the digital, electrical, general, and MEMS, and thermal elements, and these dimensional, dimensional X, Y, Z, uh, we can parameterize the structural, we can parameterize input variables, and material properties, the ambient conditions. So one major thing is the ambient conditions. So usually all these MEMS devices in the multiphysics software, what they do is everything is considered ideal. The environmental conditions are all ideal uh, unless a damping factor is given. How does the damping uh, play a role here? So da uh, damping plays a role uh, in, in deteriorating the working condition of the device. How does it contribute? It's contributing through the ambient conditions. So in what environment it is operating, what is the uh, gas that it is operating, what is the mean path, free path of those molecules, 
and what is the temperature and what is the pressure that it is operating. So based on all these factors, so these damping gets decided. So it's important to understand the ambient conditions as well. So using the element-based modeling, we can define them. So how, how an element-based modeling can be used to create various means devices? You can see here that uh, we have the elements, beams, and plates and serpentine beam uh, kind of structures can be used to create resonators, gyroscopes, uh, cantilever beams, accelerometers. Okay, all these devices can be created using these elements itself. Okay, and the same model can also be simulated again with uh, FEM also for verification of these devices. So we can parameterize even the element-based models. What you see here is the resonant peaks of accelerometer design for various thickness. What you see is the resonant peaks comes down with thickness, okay? And there is, in this range, we don't see much of a change in the frequency shift uh, it's only the change in the amplitude of vibration. Okay, so similar data can be plotted on a 3D. And in case of ambient conditions, we can see that the ambient. Uh, I've in the, in this case, I've uh, created a case where pressure is changing. So you can see that with the change in the pressure, the amplitude of vibration also changes. Okay, so this is where I'm talking at. The ambient condition factors. Okay, the, amb the, the ambient temperature around, the pressure around, the gas around, the mean free path of those molecules are all important because they contribute the working of to the working of the device. So, what is the outcome? Finally, if it's a FEM-based modeling, then we have a simulation models which are which can also be parameterized, dimensional load, material properties. Static frequency dynamic analysis can be simulated, and the results are generally ideal unless otherwise. Meaning to say that in case if we don't give any damping factors like uh, the viscous damping, the uh, thermal noise, and uh, um, and uh, uh, the uh, mass damping and stiffness damping kind of factors. So all the results that are given by the FEM are all ideal. But in, in the case of element-based models, we can get similar results and also the, the results are based on ambient conditions, which considers the damping factor. And let's enter the MEMS fabrication, the clean room simulation stuff. And we have a lot of templates here. Okay, so before getting into the fabrication stuff, let me show you how this parametric simulation works. So here we define a layout and then we link this. Uh, we define a element and then we create a layout. In this case, it's a micro mirror. So let me open this. Yes. So it's a layout where it has uh, nine micrometers. So now I need to parameterize them. So let me show you this in the full view. Yeah, so this is the micrometer with various levels, which has eight levels, okay, eight layers. So these to be parameterized now, say for instance, I want to parameterize the thickness. So I link this file and then I define my thickness here. So let me get here. So let so every layer, so 0.5 to 10, one step. So here, how many steps we wanted to know? We can define that. So here in, in this case, from 10 to 20, increment in the step five. Okay, when we have this, then the software can change its thickness from 10 micrometer to 
20 micrometer in the increment of 5. So software simulates 10, uh, 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 it can simulate micrometers of the suspended beam thickness from 10 so to 12, 14, 16, 18 and 20. Okay, so it can do five different design and simulate them and then produce the output. Okay, so I have a documented output here. I cannot run the simulation during this uh, presentation. It consumes a lot of time. So I, hence, I'm showing you the result. We created this document uh, with various uh, uh, design parameters that we generated. So here you can see that for various thickness, how the device output changes. Okay, so if we can parameterize even the X and Y, so then it's nothing like it. So overnight we can run such simulations and then we come back and then we can still feel that we are still working on the design. Okay, so there's no gap here. So it can continue, uh, a continued activity keeps happening. Okay, so this was about the, F, uh, the, the parametric simulation. Okay, and let me get back to my presentation. Fabrication stuff. So here we have the process templates. So you must be, uh, you must have heard about the MOMS process, the uh, multi-user MEMS process, SOI, PISO, Scream, Summit. So usually uh, when there is a MEMS process, uh, generally uh, a community chip kind of uh, activity is will be announced. Okay, so that the cost can come down. So here you have a lot of uh, templates like this, and then we can get the custom made process flow as well. So typically MEMS process flow is custom made, uh, unless if it's a cost implication or a simple to do kind of MEMS process, then we can use the template itself. And we have extensive material library database and the process traveler. So here, and when we have a custom process, then this is how it looks like. A custom process, and this is an example of a process simulation of a nano uh, hole array. A nano hole array, and this example is an optical waveguide example. Uh, so all of you are aware that uh, waveguides are typically uh, a resonator. It allows a particular range of frequency to pass through and it attenuates a certain range of frequency. So this is an optical attenuator. So it allows certain wavelengths of light to pass through. So it is typically used uh, uh, in, in, the, in the, these are the examples of uh, nanophotonics and phosphonics related application. So similar structures can be simulated as well. And if you wish to push this design to a PowerPoint presentation, then you can just push this. Let me show you here. I think uh, I have to link it probably. Okay, I think even here, I have missed uh, linking the uh, file. Okay, um, so we can directly export this to a PowerPoint presentation, the process flow, the images, the simulated outputs, all the data, the lithography, deposition, etching, the conditions of etching, all data, all data can be pushed to a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so we do a lot of bulk micromissioning activity because MEMS itself is a micromissioning activity. So here we do a lot of bulk micromissioning processes. So when it comes to single crystal silicon, we can do atomistic levels based simulation. Okay, we can do the etching atom by atom. So let's look at this example where we are using the KOH with a same mask on a different orientations of silicon. In the first case, it is 100. In the second case, it is 110. And third case, it is one, one, one. What are we trying to generate here? Is that what is the output profile for this type of mask? So what do we understand from this? Is that what should be the wafer that we need to choose? What is the wafer orientation that we need to choose? All right. Another thing, in case if you have already decided on the wafer, 
So then what should be the mask profile or the mask dimension to achieve the desired profile on the wafer? So that's more important. Okay, so we have another agent called a PMAH, tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide, which is typically used for IC uh, when, when wet etching on IC uh, integrated chips because uh, KOH leaves some charge residuals, so which is not good for IC fabrication. So hence for IC fabrication, we use TMH, tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide with, uh, with various other uh, additives. Okay, let me see that in the later stage. So we can also perform simulation like the quartz. So here you can see the AT cut and the Z cut quartz same uh, so the profile can be generated so you can see that there are two different profiles that gets generated with respect to the mask layout in case if we are taking the mask layout this is the mask layout for instance if we are doing isotropic etching we get this profile we do anisotropic etch we get a v angled plane cut and when we do plasma with a straight cut. So based on the profile that we wish to, we do the etching as required. So here with wet etching itself, you can see if it is a KOH alone, then the profile looks different. So what I'm showing you is with a square mask. So the first case where you can see a KOH etching with a square mask is no longer a square. So these are some of the challenges in fabrication. Okay, so when it is included, when when IPA is included to some percentage, then we can uh, get the profile. So in the case of TMH, we have the same issue, and then when TMH is included with surfactant Triton, so we get the square profile again. Okay, so these are some of the challenges that the foundry uh, undergoes on a day-to-day -day basis when they're trying to do a lot of etching and try to create the desired profile. So these things can be addressed in the simulation itself. And all these simulations are created based on the algorithm from the experimental data. So the accuracy is close to 98 to 99%. Okay. okay, so this is a slide which talks about how to create an octagon structure on a silicon 100 wafer. So something like we generally, when, when we do a lot of multiphysics and uh, we have very less knowledge on fabrication, then we generally think the shape of the mask should look like the profile that we want, but that's not the case. So here you can see a plus shape mask is being used to create an octagon structure. So you can define the process accordingly. So here, so this, this example, this uh, will help us to understand what should be the mask profile for us and uh, the mask pattern should look like. Let me jump on. So you can see that the octagon shape is created. So similarly on a silicon 111 wafer, if we want to do the octagon shape, then can we use the same plus shape mask? No, the answer is no. Here we use two triangles which are touching in a common edge, which has a common edge where we can use this to create an octagon shape. So what you see is this progress in the simulation. Usually when we do over etching, here we have attained octagon. When we further over etch, we always see problems or people uh, in the audience now over the fabrication will understand that uh, when we do over etching, then the profile itself is completely gone. So you can see with further increase in the etching time, we ended up with how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we ended up with hexagon. So we tried to do octagon, but we ended up in hexagon. So meaning to say that the 
etching time, the concentration of etch, so all these things play a major role. Uh, is my voice audible? I see a comment that there's no voice. Yes, sir, your voice is audible. Ah, okay, fine, great, yes, thanks. Okay. Okay, so when it comes to wet etching of uh, special materials like uh, group, uh, group 3 and 5 semiconductors, like INP, indium phosphide materials, we can do a lot of simulations on indium phosphide materials, which is a material which is typically used for uh, photonics and plasmonic applications. Okay, so here you can see that etching is a little tricky here. We end up in two different shapes on the same material. We use the same plus shape mask. And what we see is on one side, we see the V group, and on the other side, we see a four different phase uh, orientations. Okay, so in materials like INPs, uh, we can also be etched and simulated. So in the group, if you wish to, if you are working on these kind of materials, so you can even do the simulation on these devices. Okay, and we can do a quartz etching. So let me give an example. It's a quartz etching. So where this is a window where uh, I'm showing you the uh, process simulation. And this is the process simulation outcome where you can see a quad searching is already happened. What you see is here. So let me grab your attention to this region where you can see the profile. So this can be pushed to, to FEM simulation. So these are some intricacies what you see when you really fabricate the device. We are able to achieve all of these things because our algorithm is based on the experimental data. It's not just emulation. Emulations are provided by other softwares, and this is not an emulation. This is purely a simulation. Okay. Okay. So you can get the FEM, uh, sorry, the profiles uh, at various uh, cross-sectional view, and you can do a lot of measurements as well. So let me see if. Uh, yeah, I think I have opened that. Maybe if I required, I can share it later. Okay, so here we can do the process simulation on the device, and then we can try to optimize. Okay, so let me get back to my presentation stuff. So what you see is the Z cut and the AT cut. So Z cut, AT cut, and it ends up in a different profile when you use the same mask. So what I'm trying to say is, if you're applying to etch quads, or if you're already working on etching quads material for your various other applications, then you can still use the software to understand how the etching really works through, or, and then you can uh, reduce the time and expenditure in your lab. Okay. Okay, so some of the advancements in the recent version, what we see is we can do a wafer level simulation. Okay, so we have been doing device level simulation. This was a request uh, that was given to us by one of the big, a, a company um, in, uh, in, in, in aerospace that uh, they wanted to understand how uh, the wafer level, uh, when, when the device is really fabricated, then the, there are different challenges. Okay, they wanted to do a wafer level simulation. So we were able to do that and uh, uh, we were able to convince them. Okay, so wafer level etching is different from a dye level etching. So these paper level etching can also be simulated here. Okay, and then we can do the bonding as well. 
And one more special uh, stuff is that 3D lithography, the grayscale lithography, what we call it as. So grayscale lithography is not, uh, I mean, uh, we don't have a uh, uh, similar feature in any of the software where uh, we have, we have uh, supplied it to this company in the US. You can see that uh, this feature um, uh, in uh, uh, the, the, the feedback provided by the director of this company. Okay. So we developed it specially for them. And here we have the video of how a uh, rescale lithography works through. You can see a 3D lithography. Okay. Okay, so more complicated materials like sapphire especially. So when you are trying to work or trying to etch a sapphire, you can do a lot of simulations on sapphire as well. Okay, so we have this provision already built in to the tool. If you are planning to do some uh, spray etching, so we can do a lot of spray etching as well. Okay, a new uh, metal spray etching simulation based on 3D diffusion theory. So this algorithm is based on that. And um, this was developed as for uh, a famous uh, uh, mobile phone company. Okay, so we developed this feature for them and they were able to use it successfully. Okay, so if you are planning to do some uh, services uh, like uh, IAC do, does a lot of service through the INUP program. Uh, so there are a lot of service that are being done using the INUP program. Uh, one uh, is the device fabrication. So you can predict the number of devices on the wafer. Okay, so uh, and then based on the wafer size, four inch, six inch, eight inch kind of a wafer. So you can decide the number of devices that can fit in. Okay. Yeah. And then we have the macro model simulation where we can see the uh, macro model for uh, uh, for various uh, uh, voltages where it can actuate at uh, a different induced voltage. And we do a lot of parametric simulation, which I've already showed the example. So this is with respect to structural, with respect to different loads, you can create them and temperature dependent properties. So when temperature changes, there are few changes in the Young's modulus, there are changes in the density, there are changes in the stress and strain coefficients. So we can define temperature defined properties as well. And then when you're trying to do some piezo resistive based simulations, then you can define the pi coefficients based on the process simulation and along uh, in addition to the pi coefficients. So typically multiphysics people use, uh, when, when people using multiphysics simulation, then they use uh, pi coefficients. They just define pi 11, pi 1, pi 12, and pi 44, right? So here uh, you can define even that along with this. You can also define with process uh, concentration, like uh, whether you are trying to use a P type on N substrate or N type on P substrate, or if you are using diffusion of principle of boron or phosphorus or arsenic. So you can define them and then based on the depth of uh, doping, the pi coefficients gets decided. Okay, so that's more accurate than just changing the pi coefficients alone. Okay, so these are some uh, stuff that we have, the latest version. Okay, and uh, finally coming to this is the integration with IC and what you see in the window and uh, 
is the gyroscope MEMS gyroscope model, which is integrated with IC. And we have we have tested this with one of our uh, academic partners uh, in India that uh, it really works well. So this is a snapshot from his work that uh, we have tried to integrate this with IC and they have developed an ASIC to understand the signals coming from the gyroscope model. Uh, and the gyroscope is designed using MEMS, uh, using the IntelliSuite software. So what we generated them, what we generated to them was the Verilog A file. So Verilog A file can be used or opened in Cadence 2 and then we can integrate with outside electronics and then you can prepare an ASIC. If you are planning to do a ROIC using the ASIC, then you can integrate them using other EDA tools as well. So while we generate the file formats like Verilog A, PSPICE, HTL, then Scintrix, then uh, the, the C file that is a MATLAB and Simulink file. So you can open them in the other EDA tools as well. Okay. So we can do this MEMS plus IC with integration with 180 nanometer technology and we have tested this and it's working very well. For university, we have the university partnership program and that can be discussed at, at times whenever it's required. So we provide 10 user license. Uh, for a period of six months, we would do a lot of trainings and workshops with in association with IntelliSense. And this is where I like to summarize. So what we have seen is the MEMS design and development methodology. And then we see have seen the research opportunities and with various simulation backgrounds, the FEM, the uh, process simulations, and then the system extraction, system model extraction, the uh, integration with IC, all of these things. And the, the novelty is also the process simulation where we can in, in, include the process deviations in FEM simulations, okay, which is typically not possible in any of the software available in the market. Okay. So here I'd like to formally uh, take a pause and like to say thanks. So, um, and these are some of the activities that the IntelliSense can do. And I would like to take a pause and I'm open for questions. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so uh, this is Pooja Puneta from Team ISTEM and I would like to really yes. thank you. Uh, sir, can, uh, can you hear us properly? Yes, I can hear you. I would really like to thank you for like giving such a detailed view of MAM simulation and even uh, what we can do with the software and even uh, with the about the company and all. So one thing that we would like to know, uh, can this IntelliSense, IntelliSense uh, like modules, they can be integrated with console and uh, one of the user have asked about it, like it is it free yes. or paid? Uh, software IntelliSuite is a paid license. It does not come as free. And if you are planning to uh, integrate with console, uh, any CAD tool has a standard file formats. So if you are working in the standard file formats, then you can uh, use it. So what uh, we have tested, and I have personally tested it between, uh, I have seen other users doing it uh, between ANSYS and console, it, it perfectly works fine. Okay. and. Uh, Okay, I see a question from uh, Rahul. Is that uh, I am simulating a MEMS accelerometer on console at the time of simulation? What type of environment should be around the device? Okay, yeah. So, okay. So I think uh, one more point that I would like to add uh, in in case of uh, if your integration with console is that you can take the uh, IGES file format uh, from any of the software CAD tools. And then you can open it in any software. I think even console uh, imports IGES file formats. Okay, so I think you can use that. Okay, but uh, result files cannot be done. So if uh, even the console file, the result files cannot be opened on IntelliSuite or any result files cannot be opened on any other software. Okay, so this is one part. And in case if you have been using console for quite some time and do not wish to switch over to any other software, then, but still you wish to work on process simulation, which console does not have it, then we ha you have an option. You can do a process simulation 
on IntelliSuite software and then you can get the exact process model with all the process deviations and process imperfections in the IGES file format and then you can use the IGES file format and import it in console and then redo the simulation in your console so that you can even do that. As, as an IntelliSuite, it, it's my pride to say that to use IntelliSuite software tools, but as a researcher, as, as a maps person, I, I, I allow the decision to the users. Okay, and this integration of importing a process model into a console was tried with one of the research in IIT Delhi and it really worked well. Okay, and so we have a case. Okay, so coming back to Rahul's uh, question. So if you're a MEMS accelerometer on, I mean, software, so I don't know the what kind of uh, environment that you can set in console, but uh, typically you need to consider uh, uh, viscous damping and uh, mass damping effects uh, in, in, in any of the simulation tools. So not just the zeta value that is, is in damping factor. So you also need to consider the viscous damping. So since you are also saying it's an accelerometer, so naturally it, it keeps vibrating. So, and there is no 100% vacuum. Though it can be said that it is all hermetically packaged, but there is no perfect vacuum. Okay, you need to consider the pressure around the device. You can set uh, various uh, conditions and based on the accelerometer application, whether it is being used in any gaseous environment, so you can set the damping factors accordingly. Okay, so those damping factors should be more accurate. But uh, instead, what I would like to say, using IntelliSuite, you can set the ambient condition itself and don't worry about the damping factors. That is the zeta value. Uh, thank you for the answer, sir. I would like to ask participants, uh, uh, like if you have any questions that you want to ask to sir, please uh, like unmute yourself and uh, give a brief introduction, like, uh, like where are you from, uh, what are you working upon, and uh, please interact directly with the expert. Yes, Vishaka, you can uh, unmute yourself and directly ask question to the expert. Uh, my question is uh, regarding material characterization, uh, whether it is possible with this software to do the material characterization at different levels during process uh, fabrication. What kind of characterizations that you want to do? Can you give me an example? For uh, example, atomic, uh, atomic uh, force microscopy. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, like Fine. that so, kind. Yes. Okay, if it if it's atomic force microscopy, we have a module called a nano. This is one of the examples, sir. Uh, exactly. There are so many exactly. Raman spectrography is also there. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, there are not many characterizations can be done because uh, the uh, the material output that you get in your lab is always a unique uh, profile that you get. But best you can do here is that. Uh, with respect to AFM, or if you want to do a pro, uh, get a profile of that, then if you have a SEM, okay, a SEM image, then you can import a 2D SEM image and then recreate the 3D surface profile of that. Okay, so to some extent, you can do the um, AFM uh, work here as well. But again, if you, but uh, more realistically, you need to. Uh, you need to import um, a same image. Okay. Yeah. And when it comes to DRIE, in case if you are doing a dry etching, then we would uh, suggest you to import the cross-sectional view of the etched profile. Okay. Because DRIE is or uh, deep RIE is generally not a standard process. It is specific to the OEM. Okay, and uh, we always need to calibrate them. So usually when you do, uh, when you want to have a good DRI profile and you're, you're unable to achieve that, then you take the cross same image of the cross-sectional view of your profile and then load that image to the software and then try to calibrate them. So you can between the simulation and your same it tells three points where there are errors. Okay, and then you can try to optimize your um, uh, your process in your DRE equipment. 
So I can see still there are a lot many participants. Uh, if you have any questions, you can directly ask uh, Dr. Shubhas Arya or anyone who, who would like to ask Ms. Sujata. If you have any questions, you can directly ask to sir. Hi, Sripad. Hello. Uh, this is yeah, Dr. Hello, Sujata from Rajalashmi. Yes, Madam. Yes. How are you? I'm doing good, madam. How are you? Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, I attended this. It seems to be every time you're doing well. And uh, it, is, it is a lot of information that uh, we, once we were uh, interested to buy the software for the etching profile, to study the etching profile. But okay. that didn't happen. But anyhow, I'm interested in one more thing that the pressure sensor, many people have uh, done the simulation of the yes. diaphragm diaphragm and the stress studies and the deformation people have studied. Um, yeah. Do you uh, have any idea that people have done the pressure sensor with the piezo resistors so that the mechanical deformation and for the corresponding deformation, what is the change in resistance or the output voltage, whether they have done the simulation of piezo yes. resistive study along with this? Yes. We have done it. I mean, we, we have a very standard example uh, mm -hmm. for one of the realistic example. Actually, it was uh, it was a product, and uh, yeah, we were allowed uh, to showcase that. But uh, we didn't um, before pandemic. We renewed the license for under the 10p mass. After that, I didn't okay. do that. And um, okay. what happened? The people, uh, some of our students, they tried with the uh, console and all. But uh, they okay. get uh, some problem that maybe the linking is not proper between the two different uh, analysis, like uh, mechanical analysis and the electrical analysis. Uh, uh, somewhere the link is not there, and they okay. were not successful in doing the piezo resistive study. So, oh, okay. is it possible okay. for you to help us in uh, uh, doing this? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. In, in, even in your present version, I think it is possible. Um, from the present okay, portion, so, the license I have to renew it. Maybe, yeah, okay. It's just a yes, matter of I, time. I but, didn't uh, try with the interlist, but I asked uh, the other students uh, sometimes, some students they are um, comfortable with console, so they do with console. But uh, if it is right. possible, then I can ask them to do with the interlist with uh, whatever certainly, the certainly. And I'll yeah, take you can, to yes. get the new license file. And I'll no ask problem. them to do the solution. Yeah, you're showing yes. something with the, the piece of yes. oh, good. Certainly. Okay. They can write to me directly. Uh, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So what you see right now is uh, uh, the piezo resistive uh, principle, uh, piezo resistive application itself, where you can see the electrical uh, simulation. This is the electrical part of the simulation, not the mechanical part. Uh, mechanical part is done, stress is generated. And then based on the stress profile, the voltage drop happens at different uh, regions. So what we see is the sensitivity analysis. In this case, what I'm trying to show is the how to do the sensitivity analysis. In this case, you can see that the uh, uh, sensitivity is about uh, 4.93 millivolts per Pascal. So if we can do this uh, simulation very seamlessly, no problem at all. Uh, I think I can help there. Yeah, this is uh, along with the mechanical uh, pressure you have done. Yes. That is when the input is the pressure, the output yes. of yes. voltage you measured. Okay, good. Yes, good. you can see the one minus stress distribution. Okay, yeah, fine. Right, okay, at 2.1 megapascal. This is the normal displacement for that. And then we do the electrical analysis. So, the electric analysis will be for the whole um, model that is the whatever you made this one the, this electrical is up right okay but you are not doing the electrical analysis separately and uh, the mechanical analysis separately or have you done you completely do hmm? you cannot do it because the electrical uh, output depends on the mechanical output correct so the electrical analysis when we are doing, when you are doing, you have applied the stress on that or the system takes the stress values from the previous results. It takes the stress value from the previous results. So it automatically it takes the stress values. You need not yes. to feed it, right? No, we don't have to feed it. 
So this okay. stress value, yeah. what is the stress distribution? What you are seeing here yes. will be directly taken, and then okay. we get the uh, electrical part. So the pink ones are the resistors, yes. and Correct. the white ones are the wire. Fine, fine. Okay. Just we want to take your help in this. Sure. Long time that. I am trying. I, this is not. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, every time we teach pressure sensor, but the piece of okay. we couldn't teach during when we conduct the workshop to the okay. students. We were not able to teach the piece of strip part. So if okay. Uh, okay. it can be done, I'll I would be happy to teach intelligence for our students. No problem. If this yeah. experiment. Okay. Yeah, I can just share this document at least. So maybe you can use it for uh, internet discussion and then later okay. any help required we can discuss. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Uh, uh, Dr. Vishaka, you can also directly talk uh, like uh, Sir Vishaka, ma'am is asking about your contact number if she uh, want to buy this particular software. Okay, okay. Let me pass on. Sir, actually, uh, I need to discuss about uh, uh, other faculty with other faculty members also, and then I will let you know. Uh, or okay. maybe we have a small meeting, maybe. Okay. And uh, negotiable, and then, then we will discuss. So, I have passed on the number uh, uh, of my colleague, uh, Shridevi, uh, her mobile number as well. Uh, you can directly write to her. So, and that's okay. her phone number. Okay, yes, got it. Okay, you can directly write. Uh, sometimes, if she does not respond, uh, probably you can drop in an email because she's on a maternity leave. So, on and off, she operates. Okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, so uh, if there are any other questions, uh, unmute yourself, we we'll give a brief introduction, and uh, please ask your questions. Dr. Rahul sir, Dr. Shri Harsha, anyone who is willing to ask any questions, uh, please unmute yourself. Uh, so I think, sir, there are no further questions. Uh, so we will be concluding this session and uh, sure. we are really thankful for this particular session because this has been a very in-depth analysis of how we can simulate like MAMS devices, what are the various aspects. And uh, I hope uh, the participants who have now, as of now, who are attending the session or who will see this particular talk to expert in our YouTube uh, channel, both the participants, they would be like benefited with this talk greatly. And uh, we hope for uh, more such lectures and futures from uh, your uh, company and uh, look forward uh, for such uh, initiatives again. Uh, so thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. Thank you very much. Uh, so I have given the email ID, a general email ID, india at intelligence.com. So for any technical or any uh, uh, pricing related stuff or any other details, you can directly write to them. So if it's commercial stuff, then it uh, Shri Devi will reply. If it's technical stuff, I reply. Sure, sir. Sure, we will also contact you surely. Uh, sure. So I, yeah, sure. so we are taking uh, you to the yes, sir. Uh, Vishakha speaking. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so you said for technical related queries, I need to talk to uh, Shri Padaraja. Yes, me. It's me. Sir, yes. uh, can you give your contact details also? In that case, if some yes. help is required, because I think the most technical drop... help is also required. Yeah, uh, ma'am, right. you can drop an email to indiaintelsense.com. They will provide the number directly yes. to you. Okay, yes. that would be the better way. Okay. Right. Yeah, um, iSTEM website like iSTEM.gov.in. Uh, you can uh, see the event section, and in the event section, our next talk uh, is on. Uh, Give me one second. Is this on role of flow cyclometry in the advancement of biological research? So this will be a very uh, comprehensive talk for the uh, students or the applicants who are uh, more into the biological research. Uh, in case of uh, just like today's talk, it was mostly focused on MAMS. Now it's the next talk is mostly fo focused on the biological research. 
hopefully uh, like next time also <laughs> you will uh, join the session and we would like to again thank you uh, thank to dr shripad raja for his valuable time and all the participants who have uh, like attended this talk to expert series so thank you so much and uh, hopefully this was a, a like valuable session for all of you thank you thank you again thank you see you bye bye sir thank you sir